Hi, welcome today to our exam revision tutorial on production budgets. Our learning intentions today are to understand why companies prepare budgets and to be able to complete a production budget. So first of all, we're going to look at what is a budget. So a budget forms part of the planning and control which is necessary for the management of any organisation. It is a detailed short-term financial plan developed by an organisation for a definite period of time. And a budget is looking forward, it's not looking uh, retrospectively or back. Uh, you prepare budgets uh, looking forward the, into the future. So why are budgets prepared? Budgets are prepared to help management in controlling the business. They act as a target upon which actual performance can be measured. So you compare your budgets to your actual performance. And effective budgets give uh, advance warning of problems which may arise, example, cash flow shortages and so on. So you can, if you uh, budget and you plan ahead, you might see those uh, cash flow uh, shortages arising. And they act as a powerful motivator for staff. So staff may want to try and meet budgets uh, or exceed them to get commission and so on. So what are the advantages of budgeting? Budgeting ensures correct planning takes place. It draws up a plan of expected performance. It defines areas of responsibility. It acts as a motivator for staff to achieve targets. It improves communication between staff. It ensures resources are used as efficiently as possible. And it enables comparisons between actual figures and budgeted figures. So now we're gonna uh, have a look at how you go about uh, answering the uh, production budget question in the leave insert. Previously there, uh, we co might cover the small little theory question, but the, the main uh, body of the question is working out the actual budgets themselves. So for part A, you're always asked to prepare a production budget in units. So in the question, we're usually given uh, two products, product one and two, or product A and B, and we have to see how many units of those we need to produce. So to do that, we start off with the sales units, we add closing stock because if we want to have stock left over at the end, we're going to have to make those as well. So we have to see how many, how many uh, units we want to sell. Then we add closing stock because we're going to have to need, if we want to have stocks in reserve at the end, we need to make those. And then we'll take away opening stock because there's uh, stock coming forward from the previous uh, year, which we will not have to uh, make again. So to, to work out the units need to produce, uh, start off with sales, add closing stock and take away opening stock. In the question, we're always given the opening stock units. So we're always given uh, the, yeah, the opening stock units and we're told that closing stock is a certain percentage of opening stock. So if it's 90%, you would get 90% of opening stock. Or in the question, I would say it's de um, closing stock is de decreased uh, by 10% from their opening level. So if it decreases by 10%, it'd be 90% of opening stock. Or it might say it has increased by 10% from the opening levels. If it increased by 10%, it would be 110%. Uh, usually in the leave insert, it says that it has decreased, but in mocks, it does say increased, so you need to know how to work out for it. Just be careful when you're reading the question for that. Part B asks us to prepare a raw materials purchases budget in kgs and in euros. We have to see how uh, much raw materials we need to buy in kgs and also how much it's going to cost us in euros. So our headings now are going to be material one and material two. <coughs> um, we have to see what we need for production, uh, what's required by production for these. So first of all, we're going to get product one. So for product one, uh, for material one, I get the units from part A and I multiply it by the cost. And for material two, again, I'm going to get the units from part A, the previous part, and multiply it by the cost of that material. For product two, again, same thing. I'm going to get the units um, from for material uh, from the previous part and multiply it by the cost. And I'm also going to get the units of the product from part A and again multiply it by the cost of material two. So again, I'm going to add these down. I'm going to uh, when I when I add these. I get my totals and then again same as in part A I'm going to add closing stock and take away opening stock for the exact same reasons as we mentioned above. Now we just need to be careful here in part A we were looking at the opening and closing stock in units now we're looking at the opening and closing stock in materials. So when I do that it gets me the amount I need to purchase in kgs and then I multiply it by the purchase price for material 1 and material 2 and that will give me the purchase uh, cost in euros. Part C asks to prepare a production cost manufacturing budget. So again, this, this looks complicated, but the way I would look at this is there's kind of six things going on here. First of all, um, first of all, we have opening stock. 
Then we have to add purchases and take away closing stock. That's the first three things. And then we have to add on the cost of labor, cost of variable overheads, and cost of fixed overheads. So when I kind of, when a picture is in my head, I'd say there's six things I have to do here because it looks more complicated uh, when you see it written out like this. So the first thing is opening stock. For the opening stock of materials, and again, you are given these opening stock, you're given from material one to material two, you're given the units in the question and the cost, so you just multiply the unit by the cost. Then you add the purchases of material one and material two, which you will get from part, previous part. Um, and then you take away closing stock. So again, the units um, you would have worked out in part A, and you multiply, apply, multiply it by the, the cost of uh, material one and material two, which you, you were given in the question. Then you add on the cost of labor for product one and two. So to do that, you get the units uh, for product one multiplied by the cost and multiplied by the hours. And again, for product two, the units of product two multiplied by the, the cost per hour multiplied by the hours. With variable overhead, same thing. Um, you multiply the units by the cost and the cost of variable overheads will be different than the cost of labor. But the units and the hours will be the same here for product one on both lines and the units and the hours will be the same for product two, only the cost of labor and the cost of labor overhead will be different. So, and then finally, you just have to get your fixed overheads, which are given in the question. So it's going to be opening stock, add purchases, brings me this far, and then I take away my closing stock to give me this figure, and then I add on labor, variable overhead, and fixed overhead. And that will give me my cost of manufacture. And we look to a fully worked out solution now in a few minutes, it'll be easier to see what's going on. Then for the part D, we're asked to prepare a budgeted trading account. And you are required to calculate the unit cost of budgeted closing stock of both products. So years ago, uh, part A, B, and C to this question were always the same. Uh, then years ago, part D would ask you to prepare, to prepare a budgeted trading account or to calculate the unit cost of budgeted closing stock of both products. So, so you have to do one or the other. Uh, from, I think, about 2017 and 2019, you actually have to do both. So you need to work out the cost per unit and then do your budget of trading account. Whereas previously you were given this cost per unit, so you would have only had to do the trading account, but now you have to do both. So to work out, before you can do the trading account, you have to work out the unit cost of closing stock of all products. So to do that, we have to do it for product one and product two. Then for material one, we need to get the kgs of material one, we need to for product one multiplied by the price, and the same for product two. For material two, again, the kgs uh, that we need of material two for product one multiplied by the price, and the kgs of material two we need for product two multiplied by the price. For um, labor, we need the hours uh, for product, so these figures will be the same because the hours for product one will be the same. So whatever hours it is for product one, for labor, we multiply by the labor cost, for variable overhead, we multiply by the variable overhead cost. And same for product two, these hours will all are all the same for product two, however many hours it takes to make it, and I multiply by the labor cost and the variable overhead cost. So all of these figures so far were given in the question. Now, for the fixed overhead, we're not actually given the cost uh, the, per hour, but we need to work it out. So that's why that's highlighted in black here. So this is kind of the only figure we need to work out. So to do that, to get our fixed overhead per uh, direct labor hour, we get our total fixed overhead, which we're given in the question, and we divide that by the units we need to produce the product one from part A and how much it costs to produce it and the units of product two from part A and whatever it costs to produce that. So again, these figures will be given to you in the question. So to do that, we divide that out and we get the fixed uh, overhead per direct labor hour and that's what goes in here for the fixed overhead. So then to get the total unit cost of budgeted closing stock, uh, for product one, I add down these five figures, and to get the unit cost of budget closing stock for product two, again, I add down these five figures. And once I have that done, then I can do my budget, budget trading account, because I needed this total and this total to do my budget trading account. So to do the budget trading account, I'm going to get start off with my sales. So I get my sales from product one for the question. Now this is not the units I need to produce from part A, it's the actual sales units, the ones I want to sell, and I multiply it by the selling price for product one, and same with product two, the units I want to sell, multiply by the selling price. <laughs> then I take away my cost of sales. So my opening stock of finished goods, again, I'm gonna be given this in my question, how many units I had at the start, multiplied by the, the, the cost, and again, the, how many units at the start of product two, multiplied by the cost. 
So that would give me my opening stock. The cost of, I'm gonna add my cost of manufacture, which I worked out in part C of the question above. I'm gonna take away my closing stock um, again for product one, the units which I have worked out previously in part A of the question. Uh, I have those worked out and how much it would cost me to buy them during the year. That's what my closing stock can be valued at. So again, I have opening stock, add cost of manufacturers give me this figure, and then take away closing stock gives me this. And then my sales, that'll be my total cost of sales. My sales, less my cost of sales, will give me my gross profit. So now we're going to have a look at the fully worked out solution to the 2019 production uh, budget higher level uh, solution because it's easier to see what's going on when we look through the example here. Hi, today we are going to have a look at the 2019 Leave Insert Higher Level Production Budget question. Again, there are two products that were manufacturing dark and light, and there are two materials required material one and material two. So, again, this is similar to the 2017 question and also the 2022 question. First of all, we are asked to pre prepare a production budget in units. So to do that, first of all, we are going to start off with the required sales that we need. Because we want, we have opening stock and we want to have closing stock at the end of the year, that means that we will not need to produce the exact amount that we need to sell. If there's no opening or closing stock, we would produce the exact amount we would need to sell, but with opening and closing stock, those figures will be different. So we're going to start off with the required sales for dark and light. So if we go to the question, required sales for dark and light are 12,600 and 7,500. Again, we're going to add closing stock because if we want to have the units of dark and light in stock at the end of the year, we're going to have to make those also. That's why we're going to add closing stock. And we're going to take away opening stock because we have some units available from the year before and we won't need to make those again. That's why we're taking away opening stock. We're given opening stock in the question. So the opening stock of units in the question, and we know it's opening stock because it's the first of the first, they are 650 units and 420 units. And it tells us in the question that all the stocks are to be increased by 10% from their opening levels by the end of the year. That means that closing stock, because it's been increased by 10%, closing stock will be 110% of opening stock. I think this is the first question. Uh, most other years, it says that stocks will decrease by 10% or 15%. If they were decreased by 10%, they'll be 90% of their opening levels. Similarly, if they were decreased by 15%, they'll be 85% of their opening. But in this question, they're increased by 10%. So closing stock will then be 110% of opening stock. So I get my opening stock and I'm going to multiply it by 110%. So now uh, from the required by sales, I am going to add closing stock and take away opening stock for dark. And I'm going to do the same for light. So sales, add closing stock, which again, I will need to make. And I'm going to take away opening stock, which are coming forward from previous year. I won't need to make those again. So to sell 12,600 units of dark, I'm going to need to make 12,665. And to sell 7,500 units of light, I'm going to need to make 7,542. So that's part A complete. I and mean, there we're talking about units of dark and units of light. Part B in the question asks us to prepare a raw materials purchase budget in units, in kgs, and also in euros. So to do this, now we're going to talk about our two materials, because this is a materials purchases budget. So we have material one and material two. So required by production, how much do we need for dark and light of material one and material two? So we're going to start off with dark. So the units of dark we need to make are 12,665. Now we take the units we need to make, not the units we need to sell from the question, because the materials will be applied to the amount of units we actually need to make, not what we need to sell. So uh, dark is 12,665. And then if we look at light, the units here are 7542. That's where the 7542 is coming from. So for dark, how much of material one and material two do I need of dark? If I go back to the question, for dark, 
I need 5 kgs of material 1 and 6 kgs of material 2. That's why I'm going to multiply by 5 and by 6. And for light, I need 7 kgs for material 1 and 4 kgs for material 2. That's why I'm going to multiply by 7 and by 4. You need to just be careful when you're filling this in because from the question, you might just look across at 5 and 7 and multiply by 5 and 7 which will be wrong. And similarly here, you, you might multiply by six and by four just because they're beside each other, six and four, and again, that would be wrong. So you're going down from the question five and seven and six and four, because dark is five and uh, material one is five and seven for dark and light. And material two is six and four for dark and light. So here, this is gonna be 12, six, six, five, by 5. Here we have 12, 6, 6, 5 by 6. 7, 5, 4, 2 by 7. And 7, 5, 4, 2 by 4. So in total, between dark and light, for material 1, I need 116,119 kgs. And for material 2, 106,158. But similar to above with the units of dark and light, I have opening and closing stocks of the materials. <clears throat> so again, from the question, I can get my opening stock. So opening stock of material 1, and again, I know it's opening stock because it's the first, the first. Opening stock of material 1 is 6,500, and material 2, 5,500. So 6,500 and 5,500. And again, in the question, it says all stocks are to be increased by 10% from the opening levels. So that's the stock of the units and the stock of the materials. So for the same reason that as in part one, uh, closing stock would be 110% of opening stock. So again, I'm going to add closing stock, gives me that figure, and then take away opening stock, leaves me with 116769. And for material two, I am going to get that figure, add closing stock, and then take away opening stock. So these are uh, the kgs I need to purchase of material one and material two. Now, what is the purchase price of material one, material two? So the purchase price of material one is three euros per kg, and material two, six euros per kg. So three euros and six euros. So I need 116,769 kgs of material one at three euro per kg is 350,307 euros. Similarly, for material 2, I need 106,708 kgs at 6 euro a kg comes to 640,248. Part C, we have to do a production cost manufacturing budget. Uh, part C can look tricky, but the way I would think of it is there's kind of six things going on here. <clears throat> First of all, you get your opening stock. Then you add your purchases and then take away closing stock. So that's the first part, there's three things there. Opening stock, add purchases, take away closing stock for uh, both materials. And then you have to add in also labor, which is the fourth one, variable overhead, the fifth, and fixed overhead, the sixth. So to start this off, again, the opening stock of raw materials we're just taking from the question. So opening stock of raw materials, we have 6,500 kgs of material one at 280 per kg, and 5,500 kgs of material two at five euro 10 per kg. So 6,500 by two euro 80, and 5,500 by five euro 10. So in total, opening stock comes to 46,250. And again, I'm just gonna put that over there. 
Then I'm going to add purchases. So this is just simply from part B. The purchase cost of material one is 350307 And for material two is 640248 And again, I'm going to total those in the last column. So now I have opening stock plus purchases gives me 1036805 And now from that, I have to take away closing stock. So again, the opening stock was the kgs of material by the cost per kg. So the closing stock is going to be similar. Now we're given the opening stock in the question, but from the previous part, we've actually already worked out these closing stocks, the 7150 and the 6050. They're just coming from here, 7150 and 6050. So we have those worked out already. They were just 110% of the opening stocks. And this was the cost of the materials at the start of the year. But if we want to buy the materials during the year from the question, we can see they're three euro and six euro. So closing stock is valued at three euro and six euro. So seven one five zero by three and six zero five zero by six. So in total, my closing stock comes to fifty seven thousand seven hundred fifty. So opening stock plus purchases gave me this figure. And now this figure, less closing stock, gives me 979055. Now, <clears throat> to this purchases cost, I'm going to have, I have other expenses also. I'm going to have to add in my labor, my variable overhead, and my fixed overhead. So for the labor, uh, we're going to take the units by the hours it takes to make a unit by the cost per hour. <clears throat> and similarly for variable overheads, the units by the hours it takes to make the unit by the variable overhead rate per hour. So again, we can see from part one, these are the units of dark and light that we need to produce here. The hours for dark and light, we can see from the question up here, it takes six hours for dark and eight hours to make a unit of light. That's where the six hours is coming for dark here and the eight hours coming for light. And the cost per hour of labor, I can see is, if I go down the question here, the labor is 16 euro per hour and the variable overhead 550 per hour. That's where the 16 euro and the 550 are coming from. So labor for dark, 12,665 units by six hours to make a unit by 16 euro per hour. And for light, 7542 units by eight hours by 16 euro per hour. So in total, then, the cost of labor is going to be 2181216. Variable overhead, again, for dark, we need to make 12665 units by 6 euro per hour. But the variable overhead rate is 550. And again, for light, 7542 by 8 hours by 5 euro 50 per hour. So in total, variable overheads, comes to 749793. And the fixed overhead, again, you can see here, the Q just means coming directly from the question. Fixed overhead is 681630. So my total cost of manufacture, I'm just going to add my purchases here, plus my uh, labor, plus my variable overhead, plus my fixed overhead. And that comes to 4591694. For part D, and again, any year this has come up, A, B, and C has always been the same. Part D, uh, previous to 2017, it used to be asked to carry uh, to calculate the budget of trading account or to calculate the unit uh, cost of stock of all products. But since 2017 and 19, and again in 22, when this question has come up, you're asked to do budget of trading account, but you also had to calculate the unit cost of closing stock of both products as well. So we have to do that first of all, and when we've that done, then we can do the trading account. So to calculate the budget of closing stock per unit, we need to do that for dark and light. So again, all of these figures are coming from the question apart from this five euro. So we need to work out this five euro in a minute. But um, all of the other figures, as you can see, are coming from the question now when we go through it. 
So to start off with dark, for dark, uh, for material one and two, we need five kgs and six kgs. We can see that from here. For dark material one, five kgs, material two, six kgs. And for light, for material one, seven kgs, and for material two, four kgs. So again, that's just where the seven and the four are coming from. Now, the cost during the year, if we want to buy material two, is three euro, and material two is six, sorry, material one is three euro, and material two is six euro. So that's just coming from here. Material one, three euro, and material two, six euro. So this is simply five by three, and this is seven by three, and here we have six by six and four by six. For direct labor, it takes, uh, so it's for dark, for labor variable overhead in six euros, it takes six hours to make a unit, and for light, it takes eight hours to make a unit. So again, just have a look here for dark, six hours, and light is eight hours. That's where the six hours and the eight hours are coming from. The labor rate per hour is 16 euro. We can see that from the question here, 16 euro. So 16 and 16 for the labor. The variable overhead, 550 and 550. So again, from the question, we can see that that is 550. So this is simply six by 16 and eight by 16. The variable overhead is six by 550 and here eight by five fifty now for the fixed overhead we are not actually given a rate per hour so we need to do a calculation to work out this five euros so we can see how you do that is you get your total um fixed overhead which is six eight one six three zero from the question and you divide that by the units we need to make of dark by the hours per unit plus the units we need to make of light from part one, part A, by the hours, which is eight. So six, eight, one, three, six, zero, divided by the units of dark is 12, six, six, five, by six hours to make a unit, plus the units of light we need to make are seven, five, four, two, by eight hours per unit. So when we divide these, it gives us five euro per hour for uh, the fixed overhead. So this is going to be six, six hours by five euro per hour. And for light, it's going to be eight hours by five euro per hour. So now when we add these down, we get a total closing stock per unit for dark of 210. And for light is 257. Now we have that done, now we are able to do a budgeted trading account. So for the budgeted trading account, first of all, we're gonna start off with sales. And again, these are taken directly from the question. Now, because we are actually talking about sales and not units that we need to produce, we can take the sales units from the question. So it's just the units by the selling price for dark and the units by the selling price for light. So for dark, we are going to sell 12,600 units at 250 euro per unit. Light, 7,500 units at 300 euro per unit. So for dark, 12,600 by 250. And light, 7,500 by 300 euro. And then we're going to total those to get a total sales of 5.4 million. Less cost of sales. So the opening stock of finished goods. Again, we're given this in the question. So it's just the units by the cost per unit. And again, opening stock because it's the first of the first. So it's 650 by 180. And for light, it is 420 by 240. So in total, opening stock comes to 217,800. The cost of manufacture is just my final figure from part C, because in part C we worked out cost of manufacture. So if I go up here to part C, 
cost of manufacture is 4591694. So now again, I'm going to get my opening stock plus my cost of manufacture gives me 4809494. And from that, I'm going to take away my closing stock. So similar to the opening stock, closing stock is the units I have at the end of the year by the cost per unit. So from part one, I've actually these closing stock units worked out, the 715 and the 462. So if I go up here to part A, you'll see here I have the 715, the closing stock units I've worked out already, 715 and 462. That's where the 715 and the 462 here are coming from. And we're after working out the closing stock of dark and light per unit a minute ago, the 210 and the 257. So again, that's where the 210 and 257 are coming from. So 715 by 210 euro. And again, here are the units of light. We have the end of the year 462 and they are 257 euro per unit. So if I add the two of these, my total closing stock is 268884. So again, opening stock plus cost of manufacture gives me this figure, and then I'm gonna take away closing stock. So my cost of sales are 4540610. Four, so to work out my gross profit, is 5.4 million minus that is 859390. So then all that was left, part E was a bit of theory. Um, and again, the theory, um, I just don't have the question there, but these solutions were that uh, we need to establish the selling price for attending, uh, for tendering purposes, and um, control costs by comparing budgeted costs with actual costs helps with planning and decision-making, and to find the value of closing stock uh, to be used when calculating profit. So again, that is um, the 2019 Leave Insert Higher Level uh, Production Budget question complete. Thank you.